Well, this goes right in line, but how patient should I be with scale weight before adjusting macros? This is a great question, and I am going to pass it over to Alex here in a second. But one thing to ask yourself is how consistent have you been with those macros in regards to how patient you need to be before you change them? Because if you haven't been checking the boxes, then it's not something that you need to rush to moving food immediately, as well as if you've looked at the full picture. So actually at the beginning of my prep, uh, it was something that the scale didn't move down in the way that I thought it was going to. And it was mentally difficult for me because I was like, I'm in prep, food is lower, the scale should be going down. But I was able and we were able to look at pictures, we were able to see my physique getting leaner. And I knew I was nailing down, getting good quality sleep. I was managing stress. I had good food choices. I was training appropriately. I knew all the other variables were nailed down. So it was a lot easier for me to have patience with the scale because I saw it in other aspects. And again, I knew I was doing what I needed to do. So I have a hard time answering this question of just being like this many weeks because there's so many variables that go into it. So really being able to take a look and say, all right, if I feel like I'm plateauing, which that's a strong word to use, can I look at how is my sleep? How is my digestion? Am I on my menstrual cycle? How accurate am I with macros? How consistent am I with macros? How is my food sourcing going? How is my training? Am I training too much, too little? What does cardio look like? All of these go into that to determine if someone could answer that. So if you get irritated that a coach or you ask this question on an IG question box and someone says it depends, it's because of all of these factors of I could give you a blatant answer of, hey, if you are nailing down everything, pictures aren't changing, measurements aren't changing, nothing is changing, then here's the amount of weeks you should go. But oftentimes that's not the full picture. And we answer it depends to give you that full picture so you can see that context instead of just taking something cut and dry because it's not always cut and dry in this world. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you expected me to add to that, but... <laughs> well, I talked a little bit more than I originally planned. Just it I, went, it's to, flowing. To give you guys a, a more, I guess, tangible takeaway to it as well is that um, one thing that we really push for our clients when they depart from working with us is that uh, I encourage them to utilize the check-in document that we provide when they're checking with us. I encourage them to still take physique photos because this is going to be, um, it's important to stay accountable to their to themselves throughout the process, especially if they're going to be going into dieting phases and those different factors as time goes on. Because you can, I, I think that one of the things that many people run into from just a lifestyle standpoint when they put themselves into a dieting phase is that they're not really tracking. They're, they're, they're not tracking all the variables that are there, they're kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm dieting, but like this happened and I've got this happening and, and I'm kind of, uh, doing it, but I'm not doing it. And I'm also not taking pictures and I'm kind of weighing in like three days a week. Whereas when you're doing it yourself, your ability to, um, to look at photos and, and be able to, what's the word I'm looking be for? Objective. Be objective. Um, is, is very low. And so the more data that you can collect is going to be a very important piece. So utilizing the check-in document, utilizing your, your weight tracker, your measurements, those different things, I would say if you're having 90 plus percent adherence within your biofeedback, within your sleep, your stress, um, your, your steps, getting all of your training sessions in and really putting in effort into your training, not just half-assing sessions and being like, yeah, I'm working out. I want you really training and, and putting yourself into um, a challenge and causing your body to adapt and those different factors. I would say that every 14 to 21 days, if you're having 90% plus adherence on those factors that I spoke to, I would say that'd be a time that you would potentially want to make an adjustment to the calories if you're not seeing the progressions that you want to see. And let's say that you go, uh, let's say you do 14 to 21 days, you make a drop and you continue to have 90% plus adherence and you go another 14 to 21 days and you're still not seeing the response. Now it's time 
time to potentially take a step back. I would talk to maybe a friend or a, a previous coach of like, hey, I'm having this happen. This is all the data that I've collected and I'm not seeing the response. Do you have anything that you would suggest or anything of that nature, potentially paying for like a one-time consultation or anything at all to get a little bit of greater guidance from an outside eye? Because if you're still wanting to take this on yourself and learn about you, you may just need a little bit of an adjustment from an outside eye that's being a little bit more objective than you to be able to make the adjustments that are necessary to get to that wherever you're trying to be. And so I think that would be kind of the most tangible way to answer that question. Yeah. I love that you brought all of that up. First, I will say that if you are interested in a one-time consultation or mentorship in general, those are things that we do offer through PD. So we will have information in the description box or in the show notes if you're watching or listening to this, just in case you are interested. But I love that you brought up telling clients to still use the check-in sheet because I always tell clients that. I'm like, when you depart, you have to realize that you have tracked so many metrics and so much data and had all of that information to share with me and for me to make decisions off of that. If you go from having a coach, having all of this accountability and having all of these metrics tracked to then tracking none of that, how can you expect that transition to be smooth or for you to see the results that you want to? I don't have you fill out a check-in sheet for shits and giggles. I have you fill it in because I need those data points to make decisions based off of what's going on. And so using that sheet to your advantage, because like that's what I would do in the times that I've coached myself, I have used the check-in sheet and used data because there was a time, I think it was in 2019 possibly that I coached myself through a diet for like it was 20 weeks as far as like dieting and reversing and I coached myself and at first I just kind of started a little bit more haphazard I set my macros and like hit them but then I wasn't tracking my metrics and I was like oh when should I change this and this and I was like Sue you silly girl you silly goose why don't you look at the things that you would fill out for a coach and use that as your data to make those decisions forward. So that is something that it is extremely hard as a human being to try and take all of those variables and metrics and somehow like memorize them and know them all without writing them down or tracking them. So using those is going to be extremely helpful for you. And exactly like Alex said, if you ask for help, you have that data because there was a time that I went to a doctor for something and I didn't have data and they were asking me questions and I really couldn't answer. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was not helpful to them at all. And I didn't get any help in return because I didn't have that. And then the next time I went to a doctor with a problem, I had like specific dates, everything outlined in notes, and they were able to help me right away because I had that information. So yeah. And if you're taking yourself through a dieting phase, you have to track metrics because if you're just being like, no, I can, I'm doing it all in my head. I'm tracking <laughs> all of my things in my head. The reality is, is that you're making almost all the decisions from an emotional perspective, and you're only taking into account probably what happened over the last 12 hours. You're not taking into account, I, I, I promise you, like, I think that there are people out there that do an in incredible job coaching themselves, but those individuals do a, an immaculate job of tracking a crazy amount of data. So that is going to be the biggest thing. Yeah.